Now, as you may know, AT&T and I have sold all my AT&T stock. I have canceled HBO. Uh, they own HBO, AT&T through the Warner's uh, subsidiary. They own CNN. This is AT&T. All right. So they are a woke corporation. They are a far left corporation. I don't want to do business with them. I don't think they're helping America. My opinion, I'm not asking you to do it. We don't do the boycott thing here. Well, our pal Bernie Goldberg worked for HBO for 22 years. All right. He did a program called Real Sports and he won eight Emmys. Goldberg has 14 Emmys. 11 more than I do. And that shows you the injustice in this world, that Goldberg has 11 more enemies than I do. Okay, I have three. He has 14, eight of which were gathered while he worked for HBO. But Goldberg doesn't work for them anymore. Okay, so he said that he is resigning and he quit. And there are some reasons why. So we want to know what those reasons are. Bernard Goldberg joins us now from North Carolina. He is the purveyor of a very fine website, bernardgoldberg.com. So why'd you quit? Well, there are seven correspondents on the show. You are looking at diversity on the show. I literally am diversity. The other six are they range from liberal to far left. That's okay in their private lives. I have no issue with that whatsoever. And, and frankly, we all get along very well. We go in the green room before the show, we talk, we chat, we make jokes. I have no problem with any of that. But there have been occasions when I suggested stories. I'll give you one example. Jason Whitlock is a black conservative sports writer. He's a very good writer. He's a very smart guy. He's a very serious thinker. I said, why don't we do a profile on Jason Whitlock? This is a, a serious sports show that we do. He'd be perfect for it. No, they wouldn't do it either because Brian Gumbel, who I have no personal issue with, I want to make that clear, either because Brian Gumbel uh, said no to the story or the producers uh, probably, in, in this case, the producers were afraid to take it to Brian Gumbel because they knew he would nix the story. There are other examples like that. Again, I have no problem with anybody's personal politics, but when it intrudes on the integrity of journalism, I have a problem. I had had enough. I said, that's it. I'm gone. And I left. And, uh, All right. This is the what, what, what about the transgender story you did uh, in September? That was, uh, I don't know if it's controversial. It never ran, right? That transgender story yeah. never ran, did it? Let me speak about that. That's, that's important. Okay. That, that transgender story was an example of down the middle, both sides of the story, nuanced, fair play, journalism. Brian Gumbel had no issue with it. The executive producer of the show had no issue with it. The evening before the piece was supposed to air, one of the characters in the piece, a main character in the piece, a transgender a woman who was a, a, a track, she ran long distance track, said, I changed my mind. I don't want you to run it. And we're going to uh, sue you if you run it. There was no grounds for a lawsuit, but cowardice, first time I'm saying this, cowardice led the people who run the show to say, we don't want to run this because this might cause us trouble. One person said, you ready for this, Bill? It, we may have a hashtag campaign against us. And I'm thinking 17 and 18 year olds stormed the beach at Normandy when Germans were firing machine gun bullets at them. And these guys are worried about a hashtag campaign because the transgender community decided they didn't want us to run the story. Uh, the story I'm telling you was down the middle. It was as fair as anything I've ever done in my long career. And it, and it never ran, right? 
Nope. They told me at the time, we're just postponing it, presumably for one month, but they killed it. All right. Okay. Now, for people who didn't know uh, real sports, I want to run a clip. And this is the last appearance you made on HBO. It was a year ender in December with the whole crew there. Roll it. If I have to watch every word I say, because if I say the wrong word, I might get canceled. That's a very bad thing for America. It certainly would be a bad thing for me. And we all in the news business ought to be very, very concerned about the cancel culture in the world of sports and outside the world of sports. I don't disagree with you. I think we're all concerned about it. We all feel like we're doing a high wire act every time we say something that's going to go out on the airwaves. It is what it is. It is what it is. What is he talking about? Number one, it's a cliche. It is what it is. What? You're either a reporter and you do an honest job or you're not. Am let I crazy? The, let me give you the background on that because that was he. I'll give him one cheer for saying that it's a bad thing, but only one cheer, not, not three cheers. Last question for you. HBO is the home of Bill Maher. Oliver, he's on HBO, right? I never watch him, but he's he's on HBO, right? Yeah. John Oliver, the, the British guy, nasty guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are they in business now, home box office, HBO, are they in business to promote ideology? Is that what they're trying to do in this organization? Ideal, the, the ideology of HBO, even before AT&T took over, was left, left wing. No question about it. As a matter of fact, on real sports, the way this whole thing got blown up, is I said sports used to be the place where most Americans went to get away from the daily barrage of partisan politics. That statement, Bill, was deemed controversial by my colleagues on the show. They said, those days are over with. Those days are over with. I said, that's fine. And you know what? You're going to pay a price in ratings. So even, even the world of sports and sports journalism at HBO, at ESPN, at almost every place. Even the world of sports journalism is infected with a left of center perspective and bias. And you they're losing their audience. And Amar is almost down yeah. on his first run below a million. ESPN is totally blown up. If they didn't have the NFL, they'd be off the air. Uh, and HBO, I don't know anybody who watches HBO anymore. Um, because it does seem to me that this organization is simply in business to promote a left-wing ideology. Last word. Yeah, this is what I say, and I've said it on my website, that athletes, as long as their team and the league allows it, allows it, have rights. They have a right to take a knee. They have a right to stay in the locker room during the national anthem. They have a right to talk about racism being everywhere. Racism is everywhere, as a National Hockey League player put it. They have all those rights. And you know who else has rights? The fans have rights. The fans have rights to say, I didn't tune in to a baseball game or a hockey game or a basketball game or a football game to get a lecture on what a crummy country the United States of America is. Because I don't believe it is a crummy country. And, and most, a lot of Americans who watch sports don't believe it is. And that's one of the reasons ratings are down. And I, for one, couldn't be happier. All right. Well, next time you're on, we have to talk about this Emmy scandal where you are, uh, you know, 11 Emmys ahead of me, which is, I, I mean, I, I have no idea. Also, I want to tell everybody, now that Goldberg doesn't have the HBO gig, you know, we don't want him to be evicted from his mansion. So you've got to go to BernardGoldberg.com and sign up because you got to help him. I, I mean, you know, come on. And thank, and thank those of your viewers, the many of them, who have done just that. Thank you. Okay.